Hello. My name is Roberto Toro. Uh, I come from the Institut Pasteur in Paris. And I will be showing you our work in the Open Neuroimaging Laboratory. And together with Katia Hoya, who's sitting down there in, in the room, we will attempt a lead demo. OK, so pray for us. Um, so I, I will tell you a little bit about the, the story, the, the recent history of the field of neuroimaging. Probably you are, you are not completely familiar. <laughs> So in, in brain imaging, traditionally, people have been focusing on very, very small sample sizes. So or of the order of 20, 30 people, a uh, sample size of 40 people would be considered a uh, relatively nicely powered sample size no? until, until very, very recently. That means that the way in which uh, we were used to work was very, very manual. So uh, there would be one student sitting in front of the computer, eventually uh, doing the, the curation to see if the quality of the data was right, uh, and then launching even the automatic pi uh, processing pipelines, launching the different steps manually one by one, and then checking visually if each of the 20 subjects they, they, they had uh, was working right. Okay, but in, in, the, in the last 10 years, this has been changed extremely quickly. So we have started to witness sample sizes first of the order of uh, a few hundreds of sub subjects, then thousands, then tens of thousands. And now we are, all of us, uh, analyzing the data from the UK Biobank. So we have now 10,000 people that have, at the same time, MRI data and genomics data. Uh, and from here to the next following uh, five years, we should have 100,000 uh, people with both both magnetic resonance imaging data and genetics data. That means that the, the years of working manually on our data are, are, are finished. So the, the field has uh, starting to move very strongly into more automatic sort of processing, you know, automatic pipelines, then doing, um, starting to use more, more reprodu reproducible sort of uh, methodology where our code will be shared, our data will be shared, and also our uh, pre-processing data will be shared. And in, 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 in particular, for example, there's in, uh, among these data sharing projects, there are even some public uh, data sharing projects where you don't even need a, an ethics committee agreement. You can just, for example, go and click into that link and you will get access to eventually the, the magnetic resonance imaging data set of an autistic patient, okay? Properly anonymized, etc. But so that there's a, a huge number of data that we all have access just by clicking a, a button. And there's a, still a lot of work to do. It's uh, not the mainstream today to do this sort of research, but it, it's gaining a lot of momentum. And, but but I, I think it's not completely a solution. And, and we in the lab have been working with this uh, sort of uh, data, and we are still facing a lot of pr uh, problems. So there, there's, of course, there's a lot of sharing, but there's still a lot of uh, silo, siloing going on, if the word exists. So uh, the, the, the approach is in particular um, a silo, and so the people will run the analysis in their own computer clusters. So you will have to download, for example, all the 10,000 data sets from the UK Biobank or 100,000 and then analyze them in your lab and process them in your lab, curate them in your lab, check the quality in your lab. Then the, 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 there's also a, a, a waste involved because very often our automatic pipelines will not work. In, fa in fact, there's up to a 30% of a failure in the automatic pipelines. And most of that data, because we are unable to do as we did before the manual editing, we have to just discard and exclude. And there's another point that I noted in case that I want, and of course it, it's absolutely redundant. Imagine the case of these data sets that we all have access to, and if we all have to run again and again the same preprocessing pipelines or the same quality control, etc., we are just working in a very inefficient way. So in some sort, the, the data sharing and code sharing, of course, are very beneficial and, and enhance our ability to collaborate, but this sort of collaboration for certain types of collaboration is still very inefficient. And in particular, I, I would like to say that it's probably in, in to us what was the, the motivation for the Open Neuroimaging Laboratory is that the insight is siloed. You know, when you have a, your own methodology, you will apply that in your lab. The discussions still happen within the labs. Of course, we share, but you know, the, it's, it, it reminds me really that when, when we're forced to share, and I hope you are not leaving this yet, so you have 
like this. We all have Word installed in our computers. And when we write our papers, we used to have this version one, version two. So this is like the most inefficient sort of collaboration. This is what the sort of, if, if you want to work between two labs, etc. this is more or less what we're facing today. So we have these very inefficient pipelines where we can send each other along data. It can be through Amazon S3, whatever, but, but at the end there's someone that has to combine all the, all the results. So it's still at, at this level very inefficient. And uh, hopefully we have all moved uh, beyond this point and we use, like, for example, Google Documents where we can all write at the same time the same document and, and have a chat on the side where we can collaborate on the same, at the same time. And probably one, one beautiful example is Wikipedia where you know, we are all, more or less all the planet or everyone that's able to, to speak English or any of the, the Wikipedia languages working on the same data at the same time, collaborating exactly on the same data. <laughs> And that's what we wanted to uh, bring to neuroimaging. So the ability to work together simultaneously on the same data at the same time. So the, the idea, we call that the Open Neuroimaging Laboratory, and you can visit our website here. And I will show you the, one of the first tools that we built. It's really a, a prototype. So the complete code was written by me and Katya, and we are both neuroscientists. So uh, we try to do our best, but it's still a prototype. So now I will try to move to the demo. Okay. So when you when you enter brainbox.pasteur.fr, this is the, the, the page that you see. The idea is that you will be able to use this interface as a portal. I, imagine Google Docs. It's, it's really the, the same idea. And here you have a few... Um, Example brain. So if you don't, if you don't have a, and all that you need is a URL for a data set that may be sitting everywhere. It could it could be Dropbox, it could be uh, GitHub, it could be Figshare, Zenodo. We we prefer Zenodo because of the the if you are trying to ask people to help you annotate data, for example, it's better if the data is sitting in a pers permanent location more than, for example, your Dropbox that may disappear in 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 the next month. So you, then you, you click and you have immediately, without having to install anything, uh, access to, to the data. Okay, and this is just one, maybe I will not go too fancy, this is a lion brain. But I will show you just, probably to stay more serious on topic. This is the one brain from the Abide initiative, so the, to study autism, the brain, brain imaging of autism. And you can see already that there's a lot of annotation associated with this data set. And I will go, for example, to the um, well. Any, any, any should do. But, 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 but you can, you can here uh, visualize the, the data. Uh, so go through the slices without, without having to install basically anything. Okay, but you can you can also of course go and, and look for a, a data set somewhere sitting on the on the web. So here uh, I, I this is one that I know because I put it there. So it's a, a giant panda I'm right from from Zenodo, and so you just click there. You control click in the case of a Mac on the on the link. Then you go back to your uh, brain box, and then just by pasting the the, the link you will get to see the MRI. Of course, this is an MRI that, that, that I already entered. So you can see that there are some um, here and there, uh, the volume annotations. Uh, in the case of the panda, I think it may be the segmentation of the cerebrum that will hopefully appear. <laughs> it did not. Ah, there you go. Uh, segmentation and then also some uh, text annotations. So what you can do, again, is visualize. There's also a, a, a nice 3D viewer that works directly on the, on the web browser. So it, it will take a, a little bit of time, but, but hopefully not, not too much. Now you're under my spell. <laughs> Should be done. Let me. Okay. If you're patient enough, you will see a 3D panda brain. Okay. Well. 
we're just neuroscientists, you know, the coding is still not our thing. I, I, will, I will, yeah, <laughs> kill. Okay, and so I will go to the back to the panda brain, not trying this time to 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 show the three D render. But uh, so if if you have if you happen to have more than just one brain, like like is the case for for this panda, you can aggregate all your data into projects. So anyone that opens an account and for the moment accounts are created using your GitHub account uh, for authentication. And here you can see, uh, for example, this project that has different animal brains. And you can add collaborators, have some degree of access, uh, authorization, permission management. Then here you are able to add more or less uh, annotations, which can be for the moment of type volume, like the 3D volumes that I showed you, but also <coughs> like text annotations. And then very simply the, the list of URLs that you are uh, annotating. Okay, uh, also it's interesting that, again, I don't know if I'm doing it right, uh, no. So all the, by, by adding this JSON tag, you should have access to all the data. I never remember where, where we added that, this in, in, into the entry point, uh, no, well. But you should have access to all the, the data in a project as, a, as a, just a JSON data. Sorry, sorry about the, the um, okay. So we will go back to the, just the project. Okay, so go back to project. And now what's interesting, so for the moment I have been showing you how to aggregate data, how to visualize the data, but you can also annotate data, basically in, in, in real time. So here, uh, and I will, be, uh, I will have the, the help from, from Katia, um, if, uh, so that's a black rhinoceros, but I will um, probably move to the baboon, who a, has a smaller brain than a black rhinoceros. This may be probably the only black rhinoceros sitting on the web. It's quite cool. So uh, if I, I, can, I can, of course, here myself come and, and annotate. Let's say that I think that the, the black rhinoceros quality is not actually good, but medium, or you know that the specimen has some, some damage. But if some other person is connected at the same time as you are, as in a Google Doc, to the same data set, as is the case of Katya, hopefully, and if you see, she's, she's annotating da down there, so when she writes something, it appears immediately in my, in my interface, okay? I can also, for example, uh, go, go back to the, to the baboon, and I have my iPad, I'm, I'm connected to the, to the same data set, and I will say hi to myself, okay? In the, the, in, in, the, in the little chat window. And now in my, in my iPad, if I click on that high, which I will do now, it will take me in the iPad to that same data set. Okay, so now it's three people connected to the same data set. It's Katia, the computer, and the iPad. So uh, for example, I can use the show tool and show myself I have to go to the, and I will be annotating. So I'm, I'm on the same slides, and, and you, you, can, you can see me there, okay? So I, I can show myself things, and for example, I will go now to, um, to a different slice. I will take this thing better. And I can show like this, this already we, so th this part is, it wasn't properly segmented by the algorithm, okay? So Katya uh, can start segmenting it, you see? And I, ca and I can help her when, when it's, she's done, I can like feel it. You know, so th the idea is that we can at the same time, if o otherwise she could have worked on this data set, I would have worked on the data set, set and then we, had, we would have to figure out a way of combining both annotations. You know, now they are all in, in the same place. And now, now she's, even even segmenting the, the the white matter, so I will I will help her by taking the oops, sorry, not integral. Uh, so I will sample the color that she has and then start drawing myself. Okay, so that that, that that's basically the idea. 
Uh, thank you very much, Katia. Uh, you can also so put all your different projects in, in, a, in a user page. This is, for example, Katia's user page. And, and this is my user page, and I will show you some of the projects. So you have already pretty large sample, uh, samples, which are all uh, directly available through the web, many of them through Amazon S3. So for example, you have the core project with 3,000 people. You have the Abide project one and two. They, they do together more than 2,000 people. Then you have many projects, for example, on non-human non, non primates, uh, data, brain development, etc. cetera. So on, on, on in general, all data sets together, at the moment, you have access through Brainbox to more than 11,000 brain MRIs, okay? Uh, w w which is quite, quite pow powerful, I think. So to try to have access to this data, now the, that all the metadata is also available through, uh, through the API, we, so with some collaborators, they have been starting to work on this uh, meta search algorithm, which is based on, on on D3, so you can select, for example, all the, from brain, brain box, all the subjects whose age goes in a certain range that have, for, have, for example, a diagnosis of uh, autism and that happen to be uh, right-handed, okay? And then you can either click here and get access to the, that data, look at that data set in brain box, or just click on the, on the icon and then use those links to create your own project and invite your collaborators to work with you, for example, on crowdsourcing or training or et cetera, many, many other possibilities. So this is what we have been doing with, with MicroDraw in the Open Neuroimaging Laboratory. Of course, the idea for the moment, we are applying it to brain imaging, which is our, our field of expertise, but we would really, really like to see a, an expansion to some other sorts of, of data. This is another of our uh, collaborative annotation projects. This is called a uh, micro draw, and instead of MRI data, this is using a um, very high resolution uh, histological data. So this is also something that typically requires a lot of manual ed editing. You see here, this is a, 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 a problem in the, in the histological slice that has to be very often manually fixed. And for this, this is a slice of a project called the Big Brain, and the, the person that was doing it, it took, it took him 10 years to, to go through all the slices and fix them one by one by hand, working both in the development of algorithms that would do that automatically and uh, manually. So here the idea is that anyone can come and draw, for example, either tag or segment a different brain region and then save everything and again, our, the work of one person would be able to benefit the, the, the work of some, some other people. Okay, so uh, as I said, there's a, an API so that allows us to have access through, for example, a Jupyter notebook to all the data. Here we are getting a token, they expire in 24 hours, so you have to be quick. And we can get all the data for a specific project and then launch a pipeline that will take the most recent uh, community curated version of that segmentation and uh, go through the, through the statistical analysis. Okay, so what we would like to, to achieve, and this will be the end of my presentation, would be the possibility of working all, all of us together in the same data, collaborating. So finally, the idea would be, in, in, in addition to go out of the silo where all our data was sitting only in our lab, uh, try to go out of the silo where all our insights are also sitting in our lab and that we can have a platform where we can share our ideas and actually work together as if we were a, a very big laboratory. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you. This is a really good collaboration portal. But have you, are you planning on using some ontology as visiting in the, the community annotation of your data? Yep. For the moment, we it, it's a, a free part partology no it's possible to decide on a fixed number of tags and what we added was this value field that normally should make it possible to point any text field to a definition of the text field okay so for example if you have a brain region that you're trying to segment let's say the frontal lobe there will be a, a link to an ontology like neurolex for example that will tell you what the the frontal lobe is to what it's, it it belongs etc but for the moment it's it's pretty much work work in progress and it but it's it's clearly one of the aims that we have also when we are segmenting different brain regions uh, the, there's a, a a series of atlases for the moment those atlases you can edit them in on github so the idea again is that they should refer so the terms in the 
cyclists it should refer to an ontology. We are not uh, making it uh, compulsive for the moment, but the, the infrastructure is there to, to allow for it. And at the moment, what it needs to be done, it's if someone wants to add a new uh, dictionary of regions, is to do a pull request, basically. Okay, so at least there will be that pull request degree of human curation of the, the terms in a, in, in, a, in a brain atlas. Yes. For the moment, we, the, the thing that we have is the, this very lousy chat window, but I think it, it, it could turn, so this one, so uh, I can say I, without actually saying, you see? So she's sitting right there, but <laughs> and, and she can eventually, yeah, she smiled. Uh, she's not looking, so so I see uh, anonymous. And what so what's interesting with this chat and the reason why we didn't use a, a already packaged chat is that we can, for example, by clicking on her name, I can go to to work with her. Or also, if I if I copy copy paste that link into an email to a collaborator, they can click in that and, and go to where we're working. But of course, it would be nice to have something like like more like Slack, like no, that that, that would have all the pro eventually uh, audio audio capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.